Hi, I'm Aldias in Medium, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to try to bring religion and spirituality closer together, and this is what this pod is all about. I will talk about my own thoughts and feelings as I am both LDS and have spiritual gifts, something that I've had my whole life, but I always thought that it was hard to combine these gifts with my religion. This has torn me into two directions and I have talked to many people who feel the same way. I can't choose not to have my spiritual gifts, but I can choose how I use them. And I always want to use them for good and to help others. I believe my heavenly parents gave them to me for a reason. So, this is me. Join my quest for knowledge. Men versus Women, Part 2 I am the way that I am because of all the past experiences I've had. It's all stored up there in my brain and affects how I interpret things and how I view life. Is it the absolute truth? No, it's just how I envision truth according to my own life experiences. I have to be humble here and realize that other people have other baggages from their past that helps them interpret life. So how I look on things and interpret situations in my head shows in the response I give out as a result. So, experience in Supercomputer on, examining it from every angle, jumping between left and right, logic and reasoning, to emotions, relationships and creativity. Back and forth, back and forth, examining through every angle and all aspects, places, location, people, amount, cost, planning, organizing, feeling, safety, ping pong, ping pong, back, forth, back, forth, until you get every angle is being covered and you feel done. I sit there and nod to myself, I got this down to the smallest detail now, mm-hmm, yes I do. How can I ever understand the person with just one computer? No matter how good that computer is, it's still just focusing on one thing. Maybe got the number down pat, or the root on the time, and done. There is no wrong or right, there is just how we are biologically created to function. And understanding this made so many light bulbs go off in my head and put so many situations in a different light. I realized so many things I should have handled differently, but then again, I always did the best from what I knew. I can't judge the past based on the information I have now. So how can we avoid miscommunication? I think it's vital to understand how we function and work as a team. Leaning on each other's strength, we are different. Let's use that to our advantage. It's not maybe that men don't have feelings, they just don't get in touch with the right computer that often. And as a woman, we might tend to want answers here and now, and preferably, two seconds ago to be honest. Do we give them time to think what they want to say and then shut down the one computer and then fire up the other in order to give us a response? So becoming quiet doesn't necessarily mean that they are figuring out a lie because in our world a question would get answered in a split second and then it has been back and forth between right and left a few hundred times already weighing every possible option to various answers weighing pros and cons to each scenario in our head before we give our final answer. And since we have already calculated every possible result in our head about every given situation, we women have a tendency to think that we have all the solutions to every problem. And in a way of showing this love, we want to tell the man what to do. In all the courses I've taken and in the Tony Robbins challenge too, One thing men really can't take is criticism, and any advice they get is a way for them to feel like they don't have it by themselves, which is for them a way of feeling criticized. Something that we women sometimes do, I have to be honest, but most of the time it's just a way for us to save time and energy, since we've already seen the outcome in different ways and have found the best way to tackle the problem with the information that we gathered. We think that we are being helpful, They think we are criticizing them and don't trust in their ability to handle it. Once again, if both parties are aware of their own superpowers and how they function, a lot of conflicts and hurt feelings could be avoided. Men are extremely task-oriented. I love how he talks about the boxes. One box at the time and they shall never touch. Women, on the other hand, being caretakers, gatherers, organizers and multitasking constantly, Because of the vast amount of interconnection nerve fibers, it gives us better smell, better hearing, and better eyesight. I would guess that by being mothers and taking care of children, we also have a more developed sense of physical sense and a sixth sense, at least when it comes to our children, in interpreting their needs and waking up at night. So let's get back to the boxes. 
What does the box analogy mean? I'm going to quote Mark Gunger once more in trying to describe this phenomenon. Men's brains are specialized, compartmentalized. Because of the separation of the two hemispheres, men must focus on one thing at a time. Okay, let's break into this box analogy. Or let's bring the Monsters Inc. into this. That is one of my favorite movies and I've watched it countless of times. Even though I've only seen it in Swedish and we use the term skrämmare or frightener or scarer or something like that. I am picturing James P. Sullivan reporting for duty. But the thing is with the doors. They got one door at a time and when they were done they sent the door back and in its place and brought forth a new door. If it was a faulty door they destroyed it. Men tend to be able to only focus on one thing at a time. One box, one door, one task. In order for them to change the focus, they need to first put the thing they are doing back in its place and then bring out the new focus. For me as a woman, that is a really slow way of doing things and extremely unpractical. Can I do anything about it? No. Don't you think men are tired of us scatterbrains? I would guess yes. Can they do anything about us being wired the way we are? No. It's just the way we are biologically created. Once again, there is no right or wrong way of being. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can in order for a better future. And as I learn, I thought I'd share my findings with you. We have to address the box called the nothing box. It's apparently man's favorite place to be in. In nothingness. I picture it as being in a spacesuit, gliding weightless in the space, just being. We women don't have that. And tell me, I'm really envious of the nothing box. I would love to be able to shut down my supercomputer and be in nothing. It's just not an option as long as I'm still breathing. Thoughts are constantly swirling up there, whether I like it or not. There is just no power off switch that's not permanent. The closest thing I've come to is my secret place. I have this secret place inside my head that I've created. My own inner house. I go there when I want to relax. I have a rocking chair in my library and a big round window where I can take a book and sit and quietly read for a while. When I get bored I start redecorating. But it's still my place and even though it's more quiet, it's never nothing. Understanding the nothing box I think is important, or at least the concept of it, and that men do only one thing at a time. In the book he is giving examples of how this can create conflicts, not knowing about the nothing box or not understanding it. We women also have a tendency to talk. And as long as we're talking to our female friends, there is no problem. But apparently, we think they hear as good as we do, and think as fast as we do. So have you ever talked to your husband while he's on the phone or playing games on his computer? Do you get great response, or keep talking with him even after you leave the room and expect him to keep listening? It might be a good experience for a man to ask his wife or girlfriend what she is thinking about and vice versa. Right now, sitting here I'm thinking about the pod episode I'm writing, and my next door neighbor that I'm seeing later, and responding to my sister's messages on Messenger, planning to fill the dishwasher and the washing machine, figuring out the best way to tackle cleaning the room upstairs for my brother's family coming to visit, wondering how my son playing handball in Göteborg are doing, and if I need to go grocery shopping today or if I can save it till tomorrow. Where can I fit in some practicing Korean in today's schedule and have time to record this and I think you get the drift. Always buzzing, always planning, which I think is one of the reasons why females tend to get more burned out more easily. I read a study showing that as the workday comes to an end, men tend to reduce their stress hormones while women's stress hormones rise. Why? Because going home tend to be where our real work starts. Kids, homeworks, food, clean and plan for tomorrow. Going to work, for me, was where I rested when the kids were small. Cred given to where cred is deserved. My ex-husband was amazing at cleaning the house and washing clothes, and I felt really blessed by that. I might not have shown enough gratitude, but I truly was grateful. If we dive into more biological differences, it turns out that what helps with seeing colors are the X chromosomes, and as women tend to have two of those, Our color vision is richer than what men have, since they only have one. So where men see basic colors, we tend to see many nuances. They also have a better vision straight ahead, 
like looking through binoculars, and women have better peripheral vision. This way of looking can also be hard to overcome if you don't understand it. Eyes in the back of the head. Yes, we can look straight ahead and yet follow the movement in the corner of our eyes at the same time. Men see totally focused on a small area and everything else blurs out. Hearing is also easier for women who can take in and differentiate a lot of sounds at the same time, can identify the baby's small cries and know what they mean. Men can become literally deaf while focusing hard on their task at hand and need to get out of that task in order to start listening. One of the most telling stories in my life was my middle son's school teacher calling me in despair, telling me my son was so unfocused. He didn't hear a thing that she was saying to him. So I asked her what she did. Well, she sat him on the mat in front of her, told him to look at her and listen to what she was going to give as far as instructions for the lesson ahead. After she was done, she would ask if he understood. He would say yes, go sit by his bench and raise his hand. No clue as to what the task was, but he had been sitting still, looking at her the whole time. What she said had been too much for him to handle, and writing this makes me realize the pressure we put on children in school today. So the female sixth sense, what is it really about? Do we have a more accurate intuition? Maybe. Or are we just as a gender better on reading energy signals and changes around us better? Mark writes that women are like walking lie detectors because we read the subtle signals and changes around us. Facial expressions, tone of voice, body language is all often obvious to us and a lot of time we read too much into it because we read it from our supercomputer perspective and not the one computer aspect. I talked to a friend yesterday and she said she had a problem with right and left and I said I do too. I think right and point left and I have no clue as to why. In the book I get the answer. Even though our brain is wired like a super matrix, it messes with our spatial ability and sometimes makes it hard to tell north from south or right from left. I laughed when I read the following. The way a woman interprets the world is nothing short of amazing, but it is also why men can't really follow women. It's not that men aren't smart, it's that we don't follow how women arrive at a conclusion. Men tend to take one step at a time very logically leading to an answer. Women not so much. It's more like reading everything at the same time and just knowing the right answer. I guess that can be really frustrating for a man predisposed to using the left brain half. And this is why understanding how we function individually can help in communicating with each other. I learned so much reading this. It was just an aha moment after another. I'd love to get feedback from you, so don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time, be the light, share the light, spread the light, shine. This is my journey. Thank you so much for keeping me company today. Please download, like, share and subscribe and help spread the light and spread the word to expand our community. Let's bring more love, peace and unity to this world. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Always be grateful, kind and loving. Be brave and remember to step out of your comfort zone and smile. If you support us on Patreon, you will get access to our meditations and extra materials so you can download them as mp3. Also, we now have a Facebook group which you can access from our Facebook community. Please answer the questions as you apply to participate. It will be a safe haven where we can keep discussing religion and spirituality, our spiritual gifts and self-development. Remember, one person can make a difference, but together we can change the world.